Okay, Wobbler, so today we're going to do a little bit of a, a, a product review here. This is the Vallejo acrylic metal colours. And uh, I've been really interested to see how these things go. Now I've heard they're not quite up there with the old clad and the AK stuff and all that sort of thing. Um, but using acrylics is a lot safer for our health and also much easier, much more forgiving to use these things rather than, um, you know, like your L clads and stuff like that. So to test this out, I've got this old airframe. You've seen me use this on a lot of things. And what I've done is prepared a few different surfaces. This one here, all it's got is like a really thin undercoat on there. Um, and that's to help the, the paint hang on. Um, I really, I mean, back in the old days, I have sprayed on straight on bare plastic, but I'd rather not do that. Even if it's just a thin layer like that, and it's just a, um, a gloss black color, and um, it, it was just a really, really thin, really um, thin and thinned out layer that I sprayed on there, just to give the paint something to grip to. Uh, so we'll try that surface. This one here has got the black gloss, and plus I've sanded it off to smooth it off. We'll see how that goes. And the other one that I've got is a wing over here that I've prepared, and this has got the more shiny gloss on it. Um, I mean, just forgive all the marks, you know, you, you guys watch my videos, you know what I've done to this airframe, it's been scratched and scuffed and had riveting and all sorts of things done to it, so it's not 100% smooth, but it's fairly smooth and glossy, um, so we'll see if there's a difference between all these three finishes. So I've got my air pressure set to about 18, um, we can try different pressures as we go through, but I've got my airbrush loaded up here, and we'll just give it this a little bit of a try and just see. Now this colour here is the aluminium colour. So first up I'm just going to spray like a fairly thin coat and see how that goes. And like I say it's a very thin coat okay, on that, that panel there. This one here, now I've given these rubbed down and try and make them lint free but because it's been a while since I've done that I don't know whether other lint has settled on here, so just don't don't think these are 100% clean guys, like this is not how I'd normally paint an aircraft that I'm going to model. So there's a nice thin layer of mat, and I'll just move it out of the road so we don't get over spray on that. Put it up there. Okay, this one here, again, fairly thin coat over the black. Okay, hopefully you can see me doing this. I know the lighting's not that great here, the way I've got it. Now normally with metalizers, I get in the habit of trying to spray from one end to the other. I don't want to sort of go around swirling patterns because I know that can sort of mess up other metal colours. Okay, so we'll have a look at our wing here. I just want to see how dry that is. That's, yeah, that's pretty well dry already, guys. I'll just give it a quick wipe over. In case there's any dusting on it, same with the one at the back there, and we'll throw another coat on there. I think it's starting to clog up a little bit in the nose of my brush here. Not bad, but I think it is sort of clogging up a little bit. I will say it's not it's not awful. Okay, so that's the second coat. I haven't put on a lot there, that's a fairly um Fairly standard sort of coat, it's not heavy and it's not real thin. Um, and this one here that's been stuffed up a little bit and cleaned with the black base. Again, I want to put like a bit of a coat on there that's not too thin. I'm just trying to fill in the, um, the shadows a little bit with that. I'll set that back off to the side again. And this one here, I'll just give this a quick wipe over with our cloth to make sure there's no dust settled on it. Okay, and obviously that's dried fairly quick. Uh, well, I can see the black base is really reflecting back through the colour there on that on that aluminium, and it looks quite nice there. But I dare say it's going to it may kill this when we go through with heavier coats. I don't know whether it's going to make a difference having a glossy black base with this paint or not but I guess we'll find that out as we go through and put some more coats on there. Okay, you can see that's a little bit streaky there, but I'm not too concerned about that. It's only just to try this paint out and see what sort of finish we're going to get with different services. Again, that's that's really dry there already, guys. Just another quick wipe, just to make sure. 
throw another coat over that. Now normally I'd give this a little bit more drying time, but um, because I want to get this video sort of shot and just to sort of try these paints out and see how good or bad they are, um, I'm not giving it the drying time that I normally would. Okay, and that's that one done. Just back on a bit more of a spray here. On there. Okay, again, put it off to the side, let it dry a little bit. This one here was the, with the gloss black surface. Just, yeah, a little bit tentative to um, wipe that because, to be honest, um, it's got a little bit of tack still left to it. So, but I will give it just a quick wipe, guys. Just really gentle sort of a wipe just to make sure there's no dust on there. Okay, and we'll go through. Another layer on there. Now I'm holding the brush at about an average spacing, nothing too close, nothing too far away. Um, too close obviously you're going to get um, the problem of pooling. Um, too far away you're going to get that dusting effect where the, the paint is dry before it gets to the surface. Okay. Put that one aside again, and we'll go back and we'll have a look at the results here now because this should be getting pretty close to what we're after now. I can see that's still a bit glossy there, that hasn't actually quite dried that area. And the same on the back here, it's a little bit tacky in some areas. But looking already, I can see that I mean it's it's a nice finish, it's not um it's not the best finish in the world as far as metals go. But, um, I mean, it definitely stands up there with, say, like your Tamiya metals and things like that. Um, and it's just so nice and easy to use. Um, the one thing I really do want to sort of test out while I've got you on the video, what I'll do is out here in the wing where it's still fairly wet, I'll, what I'll do is sort of flood it a little bit, okay? And the idea of doing this is that you want to see how forgiving the paint's going to be. So that's fairly well flooded out on the tip of that wing there at the moment. I'm sorry I've done that off camera guys, but um, I've really flooded the end of this wing here. It's um, it's pretty much drowned in the paint there at the moment. And we'll see how that's gonna dry up. And uh, what I will do, there is a little bit of, well, it's not completely bare plastic, but it's bare enough. Um, we'll do just a, a little bit of a heavier coat on that too, and just see how it grips the plastic. Okay, like I say, I'm doing a fairly thick, heavy, sludgy coat on that, and we'll see how that goes. Now, it, I can see this is a little bit of an uneven finish, it's a bit chalky in places and stuff like that, but then again, the surface is not 100% either, guys. Um, the surface is a little bit um, a little bit raw. I'm just going to dull that light down, hopefully it'll give you a little bit better idea of what we're looking at here. Um, but. It seems to be as it's drying in the more dry areas, it's coming a little bit more uniform, which is which is quite nice. Um, it's given us a nice sort of it's an aluminium effect, but I'd say the flake is just so much bigger in this than it is in you know L clouds and stuff like that. Obviously, being acrylic, it has to be. You're definitely not going to get that same sort of thing. Um, and this is our wing with the black gloss underneath, and. It is quite nice actually, to be honest, that is quite nice. I don't want to rub my fingers through it too much in case it's... And it is a little bit tacky in some places, so I'll let that dry a little bit more. And hopefully that... There's a couple little chalky lines in there. Now, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the camera, but there's a couple of chalky lines in there. So hopefully, as that dries, maybe they will go away. Um, but what I'll do, I'll go off camera and I'll let this dry for probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, what I'll also do is try and brush paint this stuff and see how it goes. Because it is an acrylic, I'm hoping you can brush paint smaller parts with it. Um, but we'll see how that works out. Anyway guys, I'll be back in a second. Okay modelers, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try a little bit of a brush painting. Uh, I've already tried a little bit on that part there, as you can see. Um, but that worked out fairly well, but I just want to wait for it to dry and just see how uniform the finish is. Um, see where you can paint back over it, like so. It seems to stand up that fairly well. Sometimes with metalizers, when you try and paint back over the surface, it goes all streaky and so on. Um, but this seems to work out fairly well. I'd put it on like normally you paint with acrylics, make it a little bit, um, 
not flooding, but um, a little bit moist, don't try and dry, brush it on too dry. Uh, but what I will do is see how this stands up to, say, dry brushing parts. Okay, and we'll go over the top of this panel here and just see whether it will dry brush. And it's sort of too wet to do that. Um, so we'll draw this piece here. Okay, so you can dry brush with it. It's the thing is, though, what I'm finding now, I've wiped off a fair bit of the excess wet part and it just dries on the brush way too quick, so I definitely wouldn't try and use it for dry brushing. Um, but we'll go back over that first piece we've done now, uh, put another layer on there, build it up a little bit and see how that goes. Um, that first part is should be fairly dry, so we'll do another coat over that as well. Uh, I'll be interested to see whether these are buffable at all as well when they're completely dry. Um, we'll just do those. So what I'll do now guys, I'll go off camera again, I'll let those dry um, and we'll go back, we'll see if we can buff them and see you know just how they turn up as far as aluminium finishes go. Okay well let's just please forgive the sound of the, um, the air vent running in the background. If there might be a little bit of wind blowing across the mic too, I'm not sure. So it might be a little bit muffled but um, just please forgive that. Um, so we've got the paint fairly well dry here now and this stuff has actually dried way thinner than I thought it would um, and the reason I know that is because there's scratch marks here from the, the heavier sandpaper that I use you can see those through the finish so it's actually dried up really really nicely um, I didn't think an acrylic paint would actually dry that fine it's actually dried really really fine enough to see um, any imperfections underneath there um, and add on the, the tip of the wing here where I really flooded it on you can't see hardly any difference between that and the inside of the wing the only thing is when you run your hand over you can feel it's a little bit a little bit rougher the finish here there but it doesn't look that way until you get it at a certain angle you can see it's got like a, a little bit of a rough finish now like I say this is an aluminium colour um, and I've done that on there and there and uh, the other wing I'll pull over for you as well just a second to find it here um, so these are had like over and out of dry now and this side here is the aluminium and I had a bit of a play with the chrome on this side here. Now the chrome is just a tad shinier. Um, not a lot but it is just a little bit shinier and what you have to be careful of is where it's flooded you can see it's ended up with a chalky finish in the areas where it's been flooded so you have to be a little bit more careful with that and the other thing is it's so loaded with the, the pigment or the metal flakes that um, it's fairly hard coming through the airbrush. You, you do have to sort of play with the airbrush until you get the right pressure um, and it just seems to stick to the needle a lot more so you need to sort of push it out and then all of a sudden when you pull the trigger back far enough it comes out in a big burst and that's where you end up with this floating. Um, I'm not saying that it's bad but it, um, it's just something you're going to have to sort of play with on your own airbrush. I can't give you settings because my airbrush and compressor would be completely different to yours so but it is a little bit more shiny than the aluminium finish but to be honest the aluminium finish I've got on here uh, I'm really really happy with I'm, I'm actually really happy with that and by the time if you want to make it a bit shiny you can put a clear gloss coat over that which I've done on another part over the side there um, I just used a little bit of future just to find mist and it shined it up a little bit more and it also protects that coat in there um, but honestly guys to do an aluminium finish I think that is just fine uh, I mean back in the old days we didn't have much of a choice we had these big thick metal paints but that is definitely fine enough to give you a convincing finish and by the time that you weather this up and all that sort of thing uh, it will be fine unless you're doing like a racing aircraft or something that's a show aircraft it's, you don't want to have a big polished surface anyway um, but one thing I have noticed about these paints is that even when you hold it at an angle, it's not a high gloss finish, even though that's reflective in the camera. You hold it at an angle, you can see it's not like a, a really high sheen finish, like some of the Alclads uh, airframe aluminium and polished aluminium and that, um, they come up just like, well, like a reflective quality, sort of like a chrome. Um, and even the chrome in this here, it's got a little bit of sheen to it, but it's only like a semi-gloss sheen, it's nothing. It, it's you know it's not really really highly shiny like a, a chrome in the old pad would be um, so I'm actually quite happy with those and what I'm going to do now I'll order a couple more colours um, because the, what I want to do is you know, have some panels in different colours and things like that 
but it's an aluminium finish so I'm actually quite happy with that and the reason I really like it is that it's so easy, easy to use you don't have to worry about over spraying a little bit and things like that uh, with, with Alclad there's a lot of playing around and you can muck it up fairly easily um, and where I live here in North Queensland where you've got you know a little bit of high humidity and stuff like that you have to be very careful because humidity can affect it um, like heat and things like that even cold um, I found can affect the paint finish as well here where I live so I'm really happy with the results of this and like I say it's so easy to use so between this and the AK interactive paints I think that that's what I'm going to use for my metal finishes from now on um, Alclad I, I do have some uses for it um, you can't beat the chrome in the Alclad the chrome is beautiful um, the polished um, aluminium again is just absolutely gorgeous you can't match that in any other paint so far that I've found um, but like I say, it's come up quite nice. Uh, I'll just quickly show you these other surfaces here. And as you see, I've flooded it on the tip of the wing here, and you can't see the difference. Um, only where I've, I've rubbed it there was still a little bit wet. You can see a little bit of a mark through there. But um, it's come up really nice. And that's why I say it's very forgiving. But, um, like I say, I can see scratch marks in there where I haven't prepped the surface properly. But like I say, there's an old aircraft, and you guys have seen the, the abuse this thing has had. Um, and it doesn't really make a difference on what surface I've put this on. Um, so this one here was just a really light base coat. This one here had a bit of scuffing on it. Um, and the wing was the, the beautiful, um, shiny, glossy finish. And honestly, you can't see, well, there may be just the slightest difference, very, very slight difference on the areas where it's a little bit thinner. But you can barely, barely notice it, guys. It's really, really nice. Uh, the other thing I've done is add on this wing tip here. I use the chrome just in thin layers and what I've done is in between each layer I'll give it a, a quick wipe back with the rag to make sure there's no grit on there. Uh, well, I found when I was spraying that it turned out really gritty because of the, the, uh, the pigment that's in it or the metallics that are in it. Uh, so I give it a wipe back, give it another coat and I can't pick the difference between that and the other chrome so it really doesn't matter. And this one here I had as you know, I sprayed over the plastic with the aluminium and then I put a mist of chrome over it just to shine it up a little bit more. And it hasn't made that much of a difference, just a little bit. Um, and where we paint it up here with the brush, it's turned up quite nice. But what I'll do now, um, give me a second, I'll grab my polishing cloth out of here. And what I'll do, I'll try and give these a little bit of a rub with a polishing cloth and see if it does actually make any difference to these surfaces. Now I'm giving this a fairly good sort of a rub. Uh, now I can see where there is heavier and lighter parts of that but I think that was more my fault than um, than the paint's fault just the way that I painted it on there. Um, and it doesn't seem to buff. What happens, well it's buffing but it's cutting right back through to the plastic so it's not something I'll probably try and buff too much. I'll do a little bit on the wing here Okay, giving it a pretty good old rub sort of thing. Um, and it has actually, it's stuck on there fairly well, guys, but what I was doing, and just even by buffing this, it, does, it, it has made just the smallest bit of difference, but it's also brought up the scratches underneath, like you can really see all the scratches in there now, that's really, really brought those out. So, like, it, you know, if you're going to buff it, you know that if you've got any imperfections, it's going to bring those out. But doesn't really add any sheen or anything to it, so they're definitely not a buffable paint, um, you know, like some of the other other metal paints that we use. Now the other thing I want to try just quickly while I watch on camera is I'm going to use a little bit of tape. This is our Tamiya tape, okay? And what I'll do, I'll put a few little bits of this on if I can peel some off. Put some of this on here. Rub it down fairly well. Um, what I'll do, I'll get another piece. I'll just untack it a little bit. I'll just put it on the back of my hand a couple of times just to get a little bit of oil off my skin so it's not quite as tacky. Rub that down. Okay. Now I know with the old cloud stuff, I've had problems if I haven't put like a, a decent undercoat on there, um, it will pull up. Okay. Um, but that's not pulling up at all and I can't even, well, there's just a really, really light pigment chain. I can see where it's pulled off some really light flecks on there, but um, it's not lifting off the surface, which is good. And as you can see, I'm really ripping that off there, and that's fine. So obviously the one with the lower pigment's going to be even better. 
actually I can't even see any pigment on that. If we're getting the right light I can see just a couple little flecks but um, it's not much. So it looks like it's fairly sturdy, hangs on fairly well. We'll try over here where it hasn't had any undercoat on the raw plastic. And it seems to be hanging on there fairly well. So it seems to be fairly durable, fairly stiff, um, handles taping okay. Now what I'll do, I'm going to leave those tapes on there for quite a while. I'll pull them off afterwards because normally when we mask, we'll put the masking on there. It'll be a few hours of mucking around, painting and stuff like that. When we peel them off, that's when you're going to find the issue. So I'm going to leave it on there for a few hours. I'll turn the camera back on and I'll peel those off after a few hours and we'll see if it has actually made a difference. Okay, modelers, so forgive the noises in the background again. Uh, I've given it two hours and what I'm going to do now is pull these up. And this is the one you see me playing with earlier. And yeah, this, it hasn't pulled anything up, which is good. And obviously the low tack one's not going to do anything. This one here, just after I went off camera before, I put it out on this area here where it was a lot thicker. You're seeing me flood this area. I put it out there and I haven't untacked it at all. It's just straight off the roll and straight on there. It's had a couple hours sitting there. so And I've ripped that off there. And again, I can see a couple little bits of metallic flake on that, on that tape, but not a lot. And it hasn't left any residue or any distinctive marks on there. So it is quite durable, guys. And I'm really, really happy with the results of this. I'm just really, really trying to rip this up now. And where I'm digging my fingers in there, there's just a couple little spots I can see. It hasn't come off on the tape, but I think it's just because I've pushed too hard with my finger there. So it's fairly durable as well, guys. Really, really happy with the results. I think it's something I'm definitely going to be keeping um, in my toolkit from now on uh, to play around with metallic finishes. Uh, because like I said, most of the time we use metal finishes that's on aircraft and, and World War II aircraft and so on where you haven't got a big polished aluminium surface anyway it's going to be something that's fairly dull um, we do see like B29s and some of the later B17s that have a little bit more sheen to them um, but I think by the time you put a clear coat over this it's going to give it enough gloss anyway so um, but anyway guys as I go through and I build other models and I'm going to use metallic finishes you'll definitely see it and in fact, I've got a B17 there at the moment. What I might do is actually use these paints on that um, so that we can see, you know, like what the finish is going to be, whether it's going to be uh, accurate or whether it's going to be something that, you know, we don't want to use on the whole aircraft. But to be honest, just with that finish there, I'm quite happy with that. I know with l clads and I know with AK paints, you can get a little bit more of a, a cleaner finish without as much sort of fleck in there. But... With the raw eye, look, with a naked eye, I, I can hardly even notice the flecks in there. It's only when I pull my goggles down I can see the metal flakes in that paint. So, um, yeah, very happy. I'm just going to rub a fingernail over this. And, yeah, so obviously you can mark it, you can scratch it off. Um, so I put it, you know, definitely be careful with it a little bit. Uh, it's like any paint, like even this old horrible paint I go over the side here, that's going to mark anyway the fingernail. But we've seen it's durable enough to take tape and things like that. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I can tell you about the review at the moment. I've put it through all the paces that I sort of want to put it through. If there's anything else you want to see me do with this paint and try it out, uh, just throw it in the comments there below and I'll definitely try and get a video up and I'll try and muck around with it a little bit more if you want me to do something different. But like always, guys, check out all my links down there. Uh, if you haven't subbed to the channel, hit the sub, like, sub button down there. Um, and also hit the like button if you like this video and like always leave comments down there I love comments back and forth with you guys really, really enjoy answering comments um, and with the links down there I will link to the products but it's something you have to search around until you get you know the prices that you want the best prices but I will put some links down there as well anyway guys like always thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video